Good morning, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Atlanta Legal Experts Radio. I am your host, Emily Rowell, and I have Karima Muhammad with me today. Good morning, Karima. How are you? Uh, good morning. I'm doing great. And you? Good. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here so early this morning. Um, Karima began her journey in mediation after several violent events took place in her New York community. Young men, men and women caught up in crossfire, killed for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Domestic disputes were also very common, and there was no ease in sight until she was introduced to Alternative Dif Dispute Resolution in 1988, and it changed her life. She was trained in conflict resolution and mediation in '94 began mediating cases as a volunteer with the New York with the New York Community Mediation Center and in 09 she trained as a truancy mediator and served as volunteer magistrate court mediator from 09 to 2012 in South Carolina. Krima has relocated to Georgia and currently in private practice and she works with pro both pro what is that? Pro se Thank you, pro se <laughs> litigants and represented litigants in personal in injury, landlord, tenant, divorce, and visitation disputes, as well as faith based community and domestic matters. Her, her clients feel confident that she will not only listen to their concerns, but act on them effectively. Karima feels her success is totally based on the success of her clients to direct their own outcomes. Awesome. That sounds like a lot. You really had a life change. Yes, I did. Can you tell me a little more about that? Well, um, it's it's a very um, it's still difficult for me to talk about. But um, back in uh, New York, there were a lot of um, problems with uh, gang violence and drug wars and so forth. And um, a friend of mine and her 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 daughter grandson was involved in a crossfire mm. um, from a next door apartment where they found about 11 people dead and the only one that survived was her grandson mm. who had um, received a bullet in the head but they were able to um, keep him alive um, he's grown up but he's not the same obviously sure. um, and then I uh, started a um, neighborhood program where I would check on the youth, um, had some different outlets for them to do. At that time, rap was very uh, prominent. Um, I got introduced to uh, nonviolent communication with the um, Staten Island uh, Community Mediation Center, and then later trained as a mediator. Wow. So mm -hmm. that's how you got started. I love the way you took that negative situation and made it something good for the community. Thank I you mean, so you really did. That, I mean, where a lot of people would just complain and, you know, say everything's wrong, they would never take the steps to make changes, and you did that. That is amazing. So what drives you today to continue this type of work? Well, um, I'm still motivated to help people communicate with nonviolent um, options as well as um, make a, a statement that people can work things out if they talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, in the heat of a conflict, uh, people forget um, about the other side, where their position is, mm -hmm. and uh, emotions range and communication is lost so my job is to redirect that negative energy to a positive energy and to help people move forward instead of dwelling on you did this to me and so I'm going to do this to you right right uh, there's two sides to every story correct yes so why do you think mediator diversity is so important and can you explain mediator diversity a little bit more okay um, as I was a, um, a volunteer mediator in the magistrate court in South Carolina, majority of the mediators came from um, middle class um, homes. Um, um, they were either attorneys, uh, 
social workers, psychologists, so forth. There were very few uh, mediators of color, mediators, um, I'm a, a Muslim, so there was very few Muslim mediators. Sure. Um, so I found that it was easier for some of the clients to communicate with someone that looked like them, um, had the same challenges as they did. Mm -hmm. So it was easier for me to communicate with my clients. And that's, that's why diversity is important. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, you're listening to Atlanta Legal Experts Radio with your host, uh, Emily Rao, and being brought to you by Peachtree Offices. Rich Casanova here, producer, engineer. Um, so, um, Karima, so you spent some time, obviously, this you know began in New York. You spent uh, about, uh, looks like, a number, number of years in South Carolina. So you've been here in Atlanta about three or four years working in private practice? Yes, um, I've been, well, working pr private practice. I only take uh, cases that are referred to me from okay. religious organizations or agencies. Um, I rarely get any um, referrals from law firms or anything like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was part of my question is where do you new clients, how do you locate those so through religious faith-based organizations? Yes, and, um, just word of mouth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, do you work with organizations as well or the more the individuals in terms of a conflict? or? I work with uh, the individuals and I also work with small businesses. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, what are, so we're on Pro Business Channel on the network. So what are some um, examples of some business uh, that have challenges? What, what dynamics take place there that, that would uh, uh, involve your services? Uh, workplace conflict is one. Right. Uh, discrimination, harassment, <coughs> sexual harassment, religious harassment. Um, are one of the few things. Uh, debt collection is another really? issue that's been coming up um, because of the the credit laws. A right. lot of the um, small businesses don't know what to say when they call someone to. Um, to pay a bill. Right. So basically I come in the middle and between the, the consumer or the debtor and the debtee mm -hmm. and um, uh, devise a communication between the two of them that is not threatening on either end Okay. and work out a situation. It's not like debt mediation where the, the, the company takes money from the, the um, debtor to pay to the creditor. Uh, I don't take any money. I just open up the communication. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so what is, what's a challenge with your business? I imagine there's many, but uh, um, what's a challenge in the type of work that you do on a regular basis? Uh, the challenge that we um, experience now, I do a lot of divorce mediations. And the biggest uh, problem with that is to ensure that the parties are... Um, in a safe environment. So what we did is we started offering divorce mediation online. Okay. And um, nice. that will help uh, to de derail any threats of domestic violence because everything is done online. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what's a day in the life of Karima? What does that look like? <laughs> <laughs> well, She's like totally different every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, my day starts at 4 a.m. And it ends at about 11 p.m. So uh, in the mornings, I get up, of course, to make my, my uh, prayers. And then I start, I also homeschool. So I start homeschooling mm -hmm. um, about 6 a.m., I start working on my cases on my website um, and uh, just basically um, working with clients. Um, I do a lot of posting and blogging and mm -hmm. social networking. Um, so I keep uh, pretty much busy. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure you have a ton of clients that you're having to help every single day. Yes, I have clients. <laughs> Most of my small business clients keep me busy. Sure. And, sure. I can imagine. Um, um, it's, you know, it's very busy. Yeah. <laughs> I got a quick question. Like, um, so uh, what's next 
you know, for you, are you bringing on more more people, or you want to uh, expand your services, or you get, um, I mean, what what's next on the horizon, I guess? What's next for us is I would like to bring on more mediators. Okay. Um, to the practice, I would like to uh, develop relationships with law firms, especially in the area of personal injury and um, divorce. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to be a bridge between the law firms and um, uh, uh, helping them with uh, Islamic divorces and um, marriage issues or contract issues because most of our marriages are contract based. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would like to be a bridge uh, for any um, language areas as they need a uh, translator and Urdu or Arabic or something like that. So you're just out there to help people. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I just love that. And I have a lot of people when you we were doing your interview that I thought of a lot of people that would be great resources for you. So I'll be happy to introduce you for sure. Thank and you. um, you're located downtown. Yes. If you will tell our listeners how they can reach you. Okay. Um, I have an office at uh, 235 Peachtree Street, Northeast, um, Atlanta, Georgia. Our phone number is 404-480-8809. And my personal extension is 503 if you'd like to talk to me. Uh, our website is um, www.karmuhfirms.com. I'm a little nervous still. <laughs> <laughs> You're sounding great. You, if you hadn't said that, we wouldn't have known. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, I'm available via chat on the website because I know a lot of people are busy during the uh, day hours, so they can communicate, communicate with me via chat. Great. Thank you so much for being on today's show. It's Karima Muhammad on Atlanta Legal Experts Radio. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. I am Emily Rowell. This is Atlanta Legal Experts Radio, and I have Shania Milton with me this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Great. How are you this morning? I'm doing good. Good, good. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Shania Milton has been a registered nurse for over eight years, and you're wondering why I have a nurse on the show. (laughs) She is currently working as a legal nurse consultant in an effort to bridge the gap between the medical and legal industries. Through her clinical experience and professional nursing education, she is able to evaluate the standards of care, causation, and other medically related issues in medical and legal cases or claims. She has experience in the emergency department, critical care, telemetry, and medical surgical nursing. Wow. So you're looking to help everybody, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Try my best. <laughs> yeah. So you ha- do legal nurse consulting. Uh, you consult attorneys. Yes, I do. I work with um, lawyers and um, there are other legal professionals within their office. Um, and also medical malpractice, personal injury. Yes, I do um, medical malpractice, uh, personal injury. I also try to work with um, products liability, uh, mm-hmm. you know, medical devices or different type of drugs that come out that may cause any type of harm and things like that. Gotcha. So tell me a little more what a legal nurse consultant is. Um, a, a legal nurse consultant is a licensed registered nurse that provides um, um, support to attorneys just to help them resolve their their medical issues within their cases there's a lot of medical jargon that goes on within Mm -hmm. um, medical malpractice and and things like that so we um you know help to try to just develop a stronger case so legal nurse consultants they actually work twofold they can work behind the scenes um, on a consulting basis only so they may work within the office setting and a They'll, they'll help to organize medical records. They'll provide um, summaries after reviewing all the volumes and volumes of medical records. They also help to provide different type of questions to ask or interrogatories or deposition questions. They just help to you know prepare prepare them better for, for their trials. Yeah, because attorneys do what they know to do. Law. Law, Law. right. Exactly. So they don't know the medical side as mm-hmm. much mm-hmm. as somebody that's qualified mm-hmm. to help. So when you say bridge the gap, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Is there a gap? 
<laughs> I think so. You yeah. know, as, as a uh, medical professional, I you know I don't know every single case that was ever uh, you know run and and you know put on trial and things like that. Sure. And so I may not be an expert in law, but I'm definitely an expert in my field of practice as a nurse. And I feel you know a lot of lawyers they may not have the time to sit down and and learn these fifteen dollar you know medical words and things like that. So, um, you know, just to help them get a better understanding, you know, I have um, a master's in nursing education as well. So I'm also very, you know, apt in helping people to um, just be educated on different things within that whole adult learning setting. Sure. So there is that uh, medical legal research aspect of legal nurse consulting that we also do as well. So if there's, you know, um, a different specific type of um, medical procedure or practice or a protocol or something that's outside of their understanding well well why did this happen before this and well was this supposed to happen before that you know Mm -hmm. those type of things we can educate attorneys on just to say well you know this is not how things were supposed to be done or this is how things were supposed to be done you know just Mm -hmm. depends on defense or plaintiff just depends on what's going on so there is a gap yes (laughs) there is a gap and the more they Mm -hmm. know the better they can represent their clients and solve a case Mm -hmm. or you know help their client yes so um so why should somebody hire a legal nurse consultant well um i think there's three main reasons that you know someone should hire a legal nurse consultant um the first reason is just their knowledge base nurses you know we go to school for several several years and a lot of them you know continue on past you know associates and bachelors and go and get their masters or further um education and um, their knowledge base they just have an understanding of anatomy and physiology and different medical terms that they um you know have an understanding of and then also you know they just they just have an understanding of different standards of practice and what's within their scope of practice and Mm -hmm. and things like that so um knowledge is the number one thing i think experience is another thing that's very important sure you know our experience that we have tells a lot more than just our book knowledge that we know because things don't always go as planned (laughs) you know your book may say well this is the steps (laughs) that's supposed to happen but you know when you when you're faced with things that go out of order our experience is what says well you know well this is what a prudent nurse would do or this is what you know is the standard of care this is what should have been followed or the protocol Mm -hmm. that should have happened so in my experience you know I work in the emergency department I've worked there for several years and so you know I I work with a lot of you know heart attacks and strokes and trauma patients and, and things like that So my experience would show, well, you know, this is how things are done. And, you know, when everything's crazy, these are your priorities. And this is what the nurse should advocate for and and things like that. And um, the third reason that someone should try to get a a legal nurse consultant on their team is also because um, we're very resourceful. We, Mm -hmm. you know, we may not be an expert in everything, but we're definitely an expert in our our field of, of practice. And, you know, like I said, I do emergency room. But we also have nurses that work in pediatrics and work with children, and they have an understanding of growth and development specific to that age group. Gotcha. And then you also have those type of um, nurses that work in oncology. So they have an understanding of cancer patients and the drugs and the side effects and the patient outcomes. And, you know, well, this is what happens when this is, you know, this drug is given. And sure. So we also have that whole network of legal nurse consultants where if I don't know the information, I can definitely find somebody who <laughs> also knows that information who would be a better help to an attorney. So. All right. Once again, you're listening to Atlanta Legal Experts with your host, Emily Rao, uh, being brought to you in part by Peachtree Offices. Rich Casanova here, producer, engineer. Um, this may be a dumb question, so if it is, it's because I was doing some engineering, pushing some buttons and, uh, and social media. But um, w- why the switch from uh, nursing, eight years in nursing, right, mm-hmm. to the, the legal uh, uh, consulting? Well, right. Good question. Or was that was that already? No, okay, that's yeah. a great question. I think that's okay. a great question. Um, I actually haven't switched completely. out. No, of no. Nursing. Yeah, because you still have to work. And that was my follow up question. How, mm-hmm. wh- how do you divide your time? But mm-hmm. more importantly, why the migration or well, adoption or? Well, it's the, it's more of an addition to yeah, my yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> more <laughs> an addition to my life, but um, definitely you see a lot of things that um, you know you you, you want to help people as much as you can, and sometimes right. you know you advocate for your patient, and maybe the doctor doesn't agree with you, and you want to do more, right. and and you see these patient outcomes that aren't coming out to be you know the best that they could be, right. so you know you want to make a, a difference however you can. Right, so right. I started noticing things that you know just weren't going right. A lot of times um, in healthcare, we've noticed that um, you know administration they will either cut hours or cut staff and it, it makes it difficult for a patient to um 
staff ratios with, you know, it may be one nurse to five, six, seven patients, which is it's not always safe. And so then mistakes are made. And you're like, well, you know, changes need to be made as well. So, you know, it's just me seeing things that can legally go wrong. Right, right, yeah. And just wanting to take some action towards that because it's sometimes it's right, sometimes it's not right. So, so more of a holistic approach, mm-hmm. right, where the, um, the, the overall treatment for that person doesn't just begin and end uh, from the medical perspective. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes things may lead to legal um, actions. Sure. And so, you know, I don't work for the hospitals that are getting right, sued right. or anything like that. And I wouldn't say that I wouldn't want to work for these facilities because, I mean, these, these hospitals out here in Atlanta, they're doing some really great things. They're making some great advances in nursing and medicine. It's just, you know, sometimes, you know, money, you know, motivates them to, to make some changes in staffing ratios, which just makes it unsafe for patient right. care at times. So then how do you balance your, your time? What does a day look like for you, if you mm-hmm. will? Uh, what is your role in terms of a nursing? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you had experience, obviously, in the emergency department, but mm-hmm. what's, what, what's your emphasis, I guess, on a regular basis? My main thing um, is uh, the legal nurse side of it. Okay. Um, I do work on the side in a clinical setting. Okay. Um, you know, I work night shift. I am right, yeah. a night shifter. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know... I, I, I mainly do a lot of um, legal nursing research okay. during the day and just um, consulting, reviewing medical records, things like that. That's the, the bulk of my time. Right. But I do still you know, try to maintain my clinical knowledge, my clinical practice, because things are changing all the oh, time. Yeah. A lot of times research will happen and it won't be even implemented until years later sometimes. So. And so what type of nursing or clinical um, uh, work do you do, kind of sp- not specifically, but mm-hmm. in what area? Um, in the emergency department, um, okay. a lot of the, the the facility I work for um, is a stroke center, and okay. they also um, mm-hmm. are you know good with um, heart attacks and okay. um, interventional type of cardiology. Where right. if someone has a heart attack and they need some sort of intervention, we right. have the capabilities to go ahead and do that. So a lot of the things are time based. So you know right. you have to get these steps done and this medicine given and you know these procedures done. And you're talking about staying ahead of the curve. There's some amazing technology, the advancements in just that space, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So there definitely is. So yeah. So tell me, I'm going to back up a little bit more and ask, okay. how did you get started in nursing before you got into the <laughs> legal world? <laughs> She's like, I don't know. What? <laughs> I, I just, you know, as a kid, um, I used to watch ER. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so that, you know, that just inspired me to, you know, try to, you know, do something within that medical field. It always just interested me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we would do projects in elementary school about how many bones were in the body and how many yeah. muscles and, you know, just all these things. It just was amazing to me. And, you know, as an adult, you know, when I went to, to college to finally learn about nursing and about the human body, just down to the cellular level, it's just amazing how the body mm-hmm. is built and, you know. I just wanted to help people. Um, I, I, I didn't have anything, you know, too traumatic happens to me as a child to say, sure. well, you know, I want to make a difference. But I definitely have always felt a need to want to help people however I can. And, you know, med- medicine, nursing, you know, the, the, that whole field is something that um, of healthcare is just something that really interests me. And, and I enjoy it. I really you're, always, you're always serving others. Mm-hmm. So who's your favorite character on uh, ER? (laughs) (laughs) If I can remember the name. (laughs) Am I that old? No. (laughs) No, I don't even remember. The only one I know is George Clooney, right? Wasn't he on there? Yeah. He was the main one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, So what medical shows do you uh, follow on this line? Do you follow today? Yeah. Well, you know... When you're not in the healthcare field, you watch those shows and you're like, oh, wow, this right, is yeah, awesome. Yeah, right, that's yeah. crazy that right. that just happened. Then you get in the real world, right? And you're like, that never <laughs> happens. You know, they got, the, you know, you notice things that they do wrong. They, you know, they put their medical equipment on incorrectly or they do CPR right. wrong. So it takes the fun out of watching the show. It does, they, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, unless you watch it for the, the drama, you know, of Grey's Anatomy and yeah. things like that. But, you know. That's why I don't watch any radio shows. But, yeah, I don't think there are any. <laughs> <laughs> Now let me turn the show back over to your host, Emily Rao. Thank you. So tell me, how do you get new clients? Who do you work with regularly Um, to do that? um, I mainly do um, a lot of networking in Atlanta. There are a lot of um, business professional networking events that I do attend, and um, Mm -hmm. I do do most of my clients through them. Um, I also do through word of mouth. um, Legal Nurse Consulting is... um, 
well, this um, field of nursing, because mm -hmm. it is still nursing, they have um, a national organization of, of legal nurse consultants, and they actually have conferences as well every year. So, you gotcha. know, we, we do a lot of networking that way, and I get cases that way, just, you know, just staying in contact with people. And, you know, sometimes people need my, my input on emergency room cases or things like that. So, uh, you know, and we'll just kind of bounce off each other as, as far as ideas and um, needs and things like that. So, I, you know, there's a, there's a variety of ways to, um, sure. to meet people and get clients, you know, word of mouth, networking events, these, these national conferences. Um, these, these seminars, they also are very educational because it gives you updates on things within my, my practice as well. So. so attorneys who are listening right now, so what would you say to them to say, you know, this is something that you need for your practice? Mm -hmm. If, if these attorneys are not um, comfortable with a lot of these medical terms, mm -hmm. if you have questions about whether something was done incorrectly mm -hmm. or, you know, even reviewing cases for merit, you know, people will sue because someone, you know, didn't give them a cup of ice fast enough. But, you know, if you want to know if there was actually something done medically wrong, then you need a nurse consultant because sure. we are experts within our field. We understand what was going on, and, you know, we, we know the things that should and shouldn't be done correctly right. within that, that field. So if you need education, if you need clarification, you know, things like that, then you definitely need a legal nurse consultant on your team because it will just make your life easier instead of spending hours and hours trying to research what a disease process is, you know, what happens when they, they go untreated or undiagnosed for such a long period of time. If you can't figure that out, you know, don't, on your legal side, then you definitely need someone who can do it for you. Just and to has explain the experience. It. Mm -hmm. Because it may not be the same for everybody. So you know how people react to different things yep. on multiple cases. And a lot of times, um, nowadays, people have so many um, comorbidities where they'll have more than one disease process going on within their body at the same mm. time. So it's not just high blood pressure. It's also diabetes or kidney problems mm -hmm. or liver problems. It's always these things compounded, you know, and people on 50 meds or things like that. Mm -hmm. or a lot of times, nursing home patients will have, a, you know, just a plethora a of medication. Of meds. Yes, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. I can imagine. Have you ever been an expert witness, just out of pure curiosity? <laughs> Not on a case of my own, but, okay. um, you know, we, we have had cases that come through the emergency department where I've gotten subpoenaed on and things like that, but not on a gotcha. personal case, but I have had to testify and, you know, explain anatomy of different things and things like that just to s explain where, you know, samples were taken or, you know, what was done or, you know, well, did the doctor do this correctly and mm -hmm. things like that. Everything is just very, very particular, and, you, and they want to know, well, was this done? Was that done? And sure. explain how it was done. So. Yes, I have been on the stand before and, you know, sworn in and all of that business. But, yeah, just not on a, a personal case. Sure, sure. So this isn't so bad, the radio yeah, show. <laughs> breeze, it's yeah. not bad. It's not bad. It's just definitely different. I've done, you know. We didn't swear you in, did we? Uh, we should do that on the Lily Experts. You can't I solemnly swear to have fun on this show, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, my last question to you is how the lawyers and legal professionals can get in touch. Oh, okay. Well, um, I do have a website, and it is um, www.shaneaLNC.com. That's S-H-A-N-E-A-L-N-C.com. And um, I'm also on LinkedIn. I am available on there, you know, under Shania Milton. And um, I do have a um, telephone number that I can be reached at. It's 404 382-5426 and um, the company name is Legacy Nurse Consulting so there is a voicemail just leave a message and I'll you know definitely be able to get back in contact with them great well thank you so much for being on the show this morning we love what you're doing in the legal world with your experience just to help more people mm -hmm. my name is Emily Rowell I'm the host and this is the Atlanta Legal Experts radio show signing out